Okay there, that's the point. Somewhere I'm going to find this, not step over a cord. Good morning, how y'all doing today? All right. So, the last song they did, I Will Praise Him in the Storm, is my favorite song. I think that sometimes when we're all happy about Jesus and everything like that, it's easy to sing worship songs and praise Him and everything like that. But when the world is starting to fight us a little bit, and we're meeting people that are against us, and people just don't want to take part of what we're doing, we still need to praise them in that storm. So I just want to put that in real fast. Let me start off with a passage of scripture from the Bible that, that, we're, going to be, that we're going to drive us where we're going to go today. Uh, it says Acts 2, 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They stole property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in, in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. Amen. Good morning, Point Church. The Point Church. I want to make sure I got that name right today. I've been accused of messing it up a couple times, thinking I was at another church, or I, was in, I don't know where I was going. But there is Point merchandise in the back if you're looking to buy some later on. Uh, that was to fix what I did the first time. So for those who may not know me, I am Ron Adair, and I'm currently one of the youth leaders for Alt and for Bridge. Patty and I, uh, so with this knowledge, know that this is not going to be a long sermon. It's going to be about 15, 20 minutes. There may be a magic trick involved. I don't know yet. Um, so we plan on beating Baptist to Emily's today. You should be there in plenty of time. Um, my wife, Patty, and I have been coming here for, to the point for about two years, right before COVID hit. We left a church that we felt disconnected to. And we're desperately seeking connection. We have been here for, like I said, over two years. We've seen the many challenges and opportunities to serve within the church, even through these times. Almost right away, we became involved with a life group with Rodney and Christine. We were made feel welcome at their home as long as I remember to take my shoes off. <laughs> I forgot a couple times. Then one day we, were, we came to church, and usually, as you know, if you're a church member, you have the side or the chair that is your chair, and if somebody else is sitting into it, you've lost your spirit for the day, you have no reason to be here, you might as well get back in the car and go home. So we came in, and we usually sit on the right side, and it was full for some reason. I think Doc brought his whole family in, so um, there was no room to sit. So we had to go sit over here on the, on the far side over here. So we go sit, and we're, we're sitting or standing, sitting in front of these three teenagers, right? So we're going through worship, and, and uh, we, uh, I'm not known as a, as a silent worshiper. I like to pray as I sing. I like to sing as I pray. And I have a tendency to dance in my area if led to do so. So after service, these three girls says, uh, t says this, says, uh, hey, would you guys be interested in helping with with youth group, I went like, wow, they must think we're pretty cool. <laughs> These are the skinniest skinny jeans I own, okay? So that's where we're going with that. All right, but I do look good in a sweatshirt. So after service, these three girls asked us, you know, they thought we were cool. Then, then I figured out the one that was doing the talking that looked the youngest turned out to be Rhonda Parker, an adult and a mother. Hey. Thanks, you still love living a dream, girl. We, we said we'd wanted to work with youth, but we're waiting for God on God's timing for this to happen. I guess this, God decided it was time, and the next thing you know, we're back in youth ministry, uh, which I love working with these kids here. Uh, and as Tim said, I've had the distinct privilege of being known as the world's oldest intern under the tutelage of Pastor Tim. My position as intern, besides mowing lawns and stacking chairs, has put me in close proximity of the leadership here at the point. I have learned much about the pastoral mission, 
through my involvement in the different ministries that he's had me help with. I would like to be able to thank God and the staff and the church for this opportunity to speak with you today. So as Tim said, over the next seven weeks, you will, you'll hear from different staff members and pastors about a common theme. It'll be called, what's the point? Each person has taken a topic to speak about and how the church is affected. As you hopefully know, the, church's, the Points Church mission statement is, what's the point Community One should be? The point exists to welcome the unchurched to become fully devoted followers of Jesus. That's about as simple as we can get as why we're here. You know, we're not here to, to have anything that, but that. We, and how do we do that? And we're going to do that by pointing people to God, pointing people to Jesus, and pointing people to community. And why did we do this? Again, simple answer. We were told to. Because of the commandments found in the Great Commission and the Great Commandment, to make sure that we spread the gospel and also love each other as God loved us. My topic today is, and what the point is, community. Not only serving the outside of our churches, which we do a great job, but also serving our own fellowship. Again, in Acts 2.44, says, All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. This was inside their church. They took care of the, the widows, the orphans, the old guys like me, and everything like that. And, and they, they did so also while serving outside the community. We have an amazing giving point food pantry that is just, it just phenomenal. The other day I was told we're like the biggest one in Lake County. We make some of these people look to shame. But we are serving 400 families on a Monday. 400, that's a lot of cars. That's a lot of groceries. We're serving foster families on Wednesdays. You give Tom a call and says, I need some bread and some food for my hungry kids. He's going to meet you there. He's going to make sure you're fed. We are serving outside community. We just completed our rebuilding project for a retired Navy veteran. And being a retired Navy veteran myself, this was a very hard issue for me to go deal with because the guy was in bad shape and he just needed more help and more help. But we, we were able to give him 50 people showed up. From this church, 50 people showed up on a rainy, cold day, right? Rainy, cold day, miserable. There was a little girl there. She was about 10 years old. She's pulling, not pulling twigs, twigs and stuff like that. She's pulling logs from people. We had guys pulling through the floors. JC was doing ceilings and backsplash. And I stood around a lot. But uh, I supervised. I, I learned that from my father. Okay. We serve in Haiti with Ebenezer Glen Orphanage and Operation Outpour which, with our own Jen Dumas. We serve the homeless with pads right here. You'll notice our floor. We need a new one. Thanks. Anybody wants to contribute. Uh, we support FRC Family Resource Center in Zion. Our own Mary King helping women and men who find themselves pregnant and searching for answers. Plus, we've recently participated in the Easter Festival here in the Harbor where our very own pastor, Tim, was the scariest Easter bunny in town with his friend, Sarah Barton, helping her, him. And we've got many other places we're going to serve here in the county and in the area here. As the summer goes on, we're going to have more stuff with youth, with the bridge and the alt. We're going to be doing stuff with them. So we're going to be having busy. But now here's my question. I know I'm busy. I know Tim is busy. I know Shannon and Sarah are busy. But how many of you here today belong to a life group? Anybody? 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 Okay. Tim. How many of you serve somewhere in the church? Are you on the hospitality team? Are you on the communion team? Are you on the funeral team? Are you on the donut team? Are you on the helping me clean up things? There, are you doing anything besides filling up these pews? Which we're glad you're here. You know the ones, and, and how many of you have sought out connection here in the church? You know those ones when you actually leave the church with people and go to lunch, or they come to your house, you go to their house, you have a cup of coffee, or just say, bye, 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 brother, bye, sister, as I leave you at the doors of the church, and I'll see you next Sunday. How many see people, any of these people see people during the week? In today's culture, especially during COVID, we saw a lot of detachment of people. 
People were afraid to meet up with each other out of fear. Churches closed their doors. Sadly, some of those churches did not open back up. Here at the point, we had to look at other means to connect them. We started on online ministry, which had still, which had still and is still a great connection. We have people from all of the United States listening and worshiping with us online. Thank God for this. Because this is one of the things that our life groups, either in person or through online, all these things have kept their church alive and vital. How many of you know somebody that you could reach out to if you had an issue that you need prayer on? Just going to, Pastor Tim, I need to talk to you. You're the only guy in the whole church. 150 people here. I can only talk to Pastor Tim. Do you have just one person or do you have a battalion of prayer warriors that take your name to God in prayer? Recently, this is one of my biggest needs. As some of you know, I was recently diagnosed with lung cancer with attachments to my lymph nodes that led to my lungs. It started off with a cough that wouldn't go away. I told my doctor, my regular GP about it, and something I said or whatever led him to say, hey, Ron, let's go get you an x-ray, make sure that you don't have bronchitis or, you know, pneumonia or whatever like that. Um, so what they found out instead was a small mass in my lungs. So I found all this out. This was on a Thursday, and I'm a hunter. I'm an avid hunter. And me and my fellas, we had gone down to Beerstown, Illinois, to go snow geesing, right? When you're snow geesing, you are in a metal pit that's sunk in the ground. And it's usually on at least 100 acres of property because they got to put a million decoys out. So as I'm down there and I'm ready down there, I got my coffee and all of a sudden my phone starts ringing. I had one bar available on my phone, but my phone starts ringing. And in, in a matter of an hour, I had five different doctors call me. Five different doctors call me. I got a little nervous. You know, they're all telling me I'm okay, I'm going to be okay. But why are five of you people calling me? And why do I need to be there on Monday right away? The reason why was they, they wanted to be in an aggressive therapy session. These people were from North Shore who I worked with for 15 years. And they knew me and they wanted to make sure that I got taken care of. So I'm sitting there in this blind. And I'm, I'm getting this information. And I'm thinking, God, number one, how'd this happen? How'd this happen? You know, I've had a lifestyle. I lived on board Navy ships for a long time. I was around things that went boom a long time. Uh, I... I been in situations where anything you talk about cancer would probably come close to me. Plus, I was a smoker for 30 years, and currently I'm a moderate to heavy cigar smoker, thanks to JC. Um, they hooked me up. They brought me in on Thursday nights, and they hooked me up with cigars, and now um, I've got the itch. How can I share this news, and, and what would be the reaction by these guys in the blind? When I know they're not Christians, they're nice guys and everything, but what would, what would be their action? My best friend, Mike, is one of the guys that if you told him that, you, you know, your arm just blew off, he'd say, you know, put a Band-Aid on it and start cleaning. Uh, he's not Mr. Love and, and Emotions. He cares about you, but he's not Mr. Love and Emotions. So I, I ended up having to tell him because I had to tell somebody I'm sitting in this pit and I called my wife. And I was trying to be as calm as I could and telling her and try to find, sound as upbeat as I could. And meanwhile, I'm about ready just, you know, to be really sick. So I, I did tell these guys and I got some inspiration from them, uh, but not much calm. Talking to the wife, I had her convinced that I was okay and I had her convinced that life was going to be okay. And I, that actually calmed me. I knew I couldn't tell my parents until I had all the information. My parents uh, are Southern and they're old. And if I told them any bad news, they would change it to what was going on with them. Um, so, no, they would, they, you know, like, like, I would hear like, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, not my baby. Uh, and that was from my dad. Um, so I, I knew I couldn't do that. So, so I did text my twin brother, Don, so here in the audience today. Um, obviously as twins, we have a special bond. We know each other's thoughts. We know uh, each other's feelings. He had, uh, some open heart chest surgery done here, uh, last year or so. And I could feel it. I could feel it, you know, and I could feel, 
uh, the need for prayer for him every day of that and everything that. And, you know, his statement to me was, was, I'm with you the whole way. I'm with you. Whatever you're going to go through, whether I'm physically there or not, I'm there with you. So I, so that, that may, again, calm me down. I did text my, so I did tell them, and I did tell my parents eventually once I found out the whole story, and I made sure, again, that I was upbeat about it. Well, after th- doing that, and after not much sleep that night, praying and worrying, I felt like I needed to reach out to somebody who I could, who could I trust, though? I knew I could trust my brother, but there's just so many people out there that were acquaintances, not friends. They're Christians or not Christians, and I just didn't know who I could trust and who would be on my side. Who could understand? I knew I didn't want to put anything on Facebook at that time. I wasn't looking for that, though eventually I did post about my condition and was thrilled by the love I got. I found out I do have a lot of people that love me out there from Cleveland to California to every place else, and it's just, it felt good. So what did I do? I sat down, and I formed a list of people here within the church that I knew I could share with. I started with leadership and staff, and then I included my Thursday night men's group, and then the Wednesday night core group. Now, the thing about our Thursday night men's group is we get together and we play darts and and listen to music. There might be a cigar involved. Um, and uh, we play darts. Now, normally Rodney is like the champion, but he felt sorry for my condition here two weeks ago, and he allowed me to win both games. I want to thank Rodney for that gift, uh, that he let me win both games, and then he decided he'd want to play a third one. So, okay. So the ones in that core group involves a lot of guys, and, and they and had a lot of people reaching out to me. I also made a decision decision to tell the kids of the youth group what was going on with me and to ask prayer for them. To say the least, the response was overwhelming. I had kids, Roman, um, Elliot, everybody there, all the guys, the girls, all praying with me and for me. And it was a very emotional moment for me to have kids that I'm hopefully mentoring and mean everything in my life pray for me. I was receiving texts and prayers from Sarah and Shannon. They were like some together. Uh, I had Pastor Tim call me way early in the morning just to make sure that he woke me up and just to pray with me. Tom King calling me to pray uh, or preach. I don't know what it was because it was really long. Um, <laughs> so I've had a lot of I've had a lot of things. JC, who is also going through some things, calling me up, texting me. And, and we're praying together. I've received prayer from the ladies' Tuesday night women's club there. I get constant checkups from people throughout the church, and I, to- I totally feel the love. This is the kind of community I'm talking about. This is the kind of community that Luke talks about in Acts. A church that not only serves the people on the outside of the church, but also serves the people on the inside of the church. When he wrote in Acts 46, 47, every day they continue to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. I thank God for them every day. As both Patty and I can attest that we have found true community and family here at the point. This is my story. Gladly I can say that I'm receiving some of the best treatment from North Shore Hospital Systems, the same folks that I worked for for 15 years. It's good to know who's taking care of you. I'm confident between their care, people's prayers, and God's grace, I will be healed. And if, I, and if I'm not healed, if I'm not, I know that God's got a plan and purpose for me. So let me ask these questions. So where do you fit in this community? Where are you serving or fellowshipping? Who do you have as a prayer partner or partners How are you tithing to support this mission of this church? Are you coming on Sundays to just be fed? Like Tim said, bring your fork. Hoping that the sermon applies to you? In that regard, many times it does. I feel sometimes Pastor Tim is calling my friends and asking the stuff about me and uh, then basing his sermons on it. 
Uh, I'm last a couple weeks ago. I got hit real hard with one when he said his statement of the year was oh, the second best statement of the year was what we worry about the most is what we trust God with the least. If that did not hit people, people, you were checked out. That hit me so hard to think, what do I trust God with and what don't I trust God with? Where I trust God so much with this healing and, and, and thing of this and guidance and prayer, but I don't trust him with my finances that I try to do things that, that are stupid as anything, right? Do I trust God with my family and how they're going to take care of that? But did I don't trust God to give me strength to give, be witness to my same family? That was one right between the eyes. I had some soul searching to do after that. Faux show. Shoe buddy. <laughs> but that's not what the church is all about. It's a, it, that's not just what the church is all about. It's about belonging. It's about building relationships through people who share the love of Christ. It's about true worship and loving each other as Christ loved us. In John 1, 5, 7, 1, 5 to 7, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie. And do not live out the truth. In verse 7 it says, but if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us all from sin. Here at the point, we have many opportunities to meet together and grow spiritually. We have groups for every, everyone. And if you can't find one, get a hold of me and somebody else will help start one. I mean, we have, like I said, we have Thursday night darts for that. We have Tuesday night ladies who end up going out to dinner more than being here. We have food pants. We have everything in the world you want to get a hold of a group you have to. Core is open to any, any other guys. Uh, and that is just awesome. So there's just a lot of things that you can connect up into, all right? Also speaking here of the church, we have many opportunities to serve here. One being is the children's aim ministry. We go like in an ebb and flow with the children's aim ministry. One day we have all these teachers and helpers, and then we don't. We need to get that strengthened up so these kids, these little kids, these little five or six-year-olds that you see running that way, are being taken care of and are seeing Jesus in us and being able to come back to their parents and show them a little bit of Jesus as well. We need help in Alton Bridge. Alton will be taking a break pretty soon, but we're not going to be taking a full break. We're going to be meeting once a month to do stuff. And we always are going to need chaperones. We're going to need people to help us out. It's a, and we can always use some help there. It's a great place to help with Bridge. And witness the community of the church. Hospitality teams are an awesome way to meet new folks coming in. That was the first team I jumped onto. Thanks to Shannon. says, stand over there and here's a black t-shirt. Uh, so, but I got to meet people. I don't remember their names, but at least I know their faces. They know me. Um, and now sooner or later, after everybody writes me a check, I'll remember your name. Food pantry is a great place to share. Uh, Tom always needs help. It's never a question, do you think Tom needs help? The answer is Tom always needs help. Again, 400 families being fed on a Monday. These people are racked and stacked all the way to Lewis Avenue. If somebody wanted to help me, the intern boy, mow the lawn and keep this property looking nice, just give me a call. I'll let you drive the no scared, you know. Uh, I'll show you how you can Drive it and smoke a cigar at one time, same time. Uh, I'm still working on drinking and driving at the same time. Drink soda pop, soda pop, right? So as I complete my speaking today, I want to go back to the original scripture, Acts 2, 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet in the, to the temple courts. They broke bread together in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying their favorite of the, all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily 
with those who were being saved. Why did they do this? Why would they do something like this? Because the power of Jesus compels us to live in a community, live in a community and to serve our community. If you've never known the love of Jesus, the Jesus community, let me tell you about it. It all starts with one eventful act, an act of submission to Jesus. By surrendering your life to Christ, Jesus allows the Holy Spirit to work through you and be alive and active in you, and you will find the true desire of service both inside and outside this building. If you feel led today, and I hope you do, to make this awesome step, we have pastors in the back tables and myself that would love to talk to you. It all starts with one step. Let us at the point seek to be the church of Acts 2. Let us not only serve the outside, but also serve in fellowship and community within the church as well. I'd like to again thank Pastor Tim and the staff and leadership for this opportunity to speak. And I'd like to go to prayer if we could right now. Can you join me in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for God for getting me through this without fainting. I hope I didn't stumble too many times and I hope God that it was pleasing to you. Lord, I hope that we as a church can be an Acts 2 church, that we can show people both inside and out that we are devoted to you, that we are devoted to helping people find God in a churchless and Christless society. We thank this and we bless you in your name, Christ. In the name Christ's name, amen. Thank you all.